Hey everyone, my name is Bridget and today we're going to be talking about the importance of grounding for ascension and spiritual development. Now, I'm here in gorgeous Joshua Tree, California. I totally get it now. I hadn't been here before and the energy is off the hook. Um, it, the rocks are pretty much just quartz crystal and iron and other stuff and it's just spectacular. So I thought I would get out on the land to be talking about grounding right now. And the thing is, is we're talking about grounding, right? But how does that correlate to ascension? Because you're like, if, if I'm more grounded and anchored, then how am I supposed to go up? Because doesn't ascension mean up? right? And so I wanted to go over this concept a bit and then also give some techniques um, and tips for grounding itself, but to understand why. Because, you know, it's like, oh, it's important to ground and be on earth, but it's like, well, why? Because everything else is saying, one, maybe I don't want to be here and also isn't just being spiritually high and freaking out there what we're going for. So I want to talk about that. So first and foremost... Let's, let's get into this. I'm, I'm taking off my shoes for this one because we're really doing this. I'm not just talking about, say right now, being barefoot on the ground. Yes, that is a part of grounding, absolutely necessary and a wonderful way to do it. Begins to lower inflammation, all kinds of amazing health benefits, but we're talking about the real juicy stuff. And so the first thing to realize, which is a very powerful hermetic teaching, is that as above, so below, we've all heard that, right? And so as above, so below. And so we have to realize that our bodies are freaking spaceships. They are made for enlightenment. They're made for full activation. We are made to be full free energy devices. We are powerful. Our vessels are seriously like those Marvel comic movies. They're like superhuman suits. All right. And it's just a matter of learning how to use it. And I understand, I understand that earth, the life here on this beautiful earth can be challenging. I get that very much so, and that's one of the reasons that I think a lot of us have gone out and kind of checked out in many ways at different times in our life is just for survival mechanism. Okay, I get that. And I understand that a lot of us have had off-planet lives. Woo! I don't know what I'm doing. This is just fun being on a selfie stick. We've had these off-planet lives. And so again, it's comfortable to be out there. It's, it's comfortable to be, say, in these higher frequencies. I totally get that. Now, the thing is, we came here to be here and we came here to be on Earth. So I always reiterate that. But the thing is, additionally, in this idea of ascension is that we also, it's very important that as high as we go up, that we go equally down. We don't just have seven chakras. That is one system. There's many different systems um, which talk about the different energies in the, in the body and the different energies within above the crown and below the feet that go into earth that are a part of our personal chakra systems. So when we neglect, say, our lower chakras, not only are we neglecting, say, you know, solar plexus and our other friends here, sacral and um, beyond, we're neglecting all of the chakras that go all the way down our legs, into the feet, in through our feet, and down into the earth. And this is all part of a prime energy sourcing system. So one of the ways that we're sourced is absolutely from the heavens, from above. And it's incredible the amount of energy and downloads and our, the connection to our higher self and the higher spiritual realms that can take place from above our head. So yes, it's very important. But if we just go up, we become destabilized. That's not how we were designed to do it. We were designed as each level that we go up, we go down a level. Each level we go up, we go down a level. And that creates major balance. That creates major balance not only in the energy systems, but in our ability to um, to navigate spiritual realms. Because when as you go higher, there's a lot of complexity and we need to be anchored and also have the source of Earth. And Earth, Mother Earth, is amazing. There's actually nothing scary about Earth herself. And she has so much to give us. There is so much love and so much connection that can be had by sourcing from the earth itself. And so it's important to understand these other areas where we can source from. Many of you guys know this. I can hear that telepathically. You're like, yeah, I know, Gaia. Yeah, I get it. Energy coming from the center of the earth. 
but it's important to really, really get that um, as an equally important thing to keep us balanced and center, centered on this spiritual path. Another anchoring of sourcing is from behind our back, from behind our hearts, which is coming from our ancestral line. We want to make sure that that's clean and going through. And I talk about that in other videos, so you can check that out um, to hear about that. But it's really important that we get this kind of like bigger scale, right, of like our, the energy coming down below our heads, the energy going down into the earth, and not just in a visual manner. So now I want to talk a little bit about how to really get into it because um, to me one of the ways that I coped and survived and actually thrived here on earth was I was thrown into pretty deep competitive dance when I was really young and so I was dancing 25 to 30 hours a week um, and that was such a heaven sent because one of the great ways beyond simply putting your feet on the earth is to open and activate the meridians and the different aspects of the body and to awaken the actual muscles, the actual blood, the actual bones, to get everything flowing and invigorated and alive. That's activation, right, of the actual physical vessel. And when the physical vessel is alive and awake, the energy can actually flow. And we have this advanced meridian system, the chakra system, so many different ways that we can run energy through our body. And when we do this and when we activate on a physical level, then we can actually awaken Kundalini. And when we've cleared everything out then it can flow correctly and I was just talking to Patrick about this today because we've heard about a lot of situations actually where people have kundalini awakenings and they weren't ready and the energy didn't run properly and they had actually major <laughs> medical challenges because they were not properly ready energetically or physically for this energy to run through our bodies. So not only are we doing the spiritual energetic training where we're sitting say in meditation and feeling the energy and like going up and visualizing and that's just a complex science in and of itself which we can go more into in other videos but it's very important as well to activate the body at the same time so it doesn't get left behind and so that as you're bringing through these energies through the crown or you're awakening these energies from the earth that your body can actually handle and move and fully light up. So with that being said, as I talked about me doing like the dance, the physical activity, literally physically moving your body and actually physically making your muscles strain and come alive begins to create a sensory experience within your body so that when you need to, when you need to run certain energies in your body, you know where that body part is. It's like, can you focus your mind right now on the backside of your right knee in this particular way and then run the energy down your leg? Do you know what I mean? And so it's very important thus to do this. And one of the great ways that I've found to do this is actually through physical exercise. So this can be moving your body and actually getting fully coordinated. Um, and it's, it's understanding your avatar suit right like just when he got in that new body and he was like oh fumbling around and he like couldn't run and he didn't know how to use it it's like we have to understand how to use the vessel and then once we understand to use it how to use it on a physical level then we can also more easily tap into how we can run the energy. I think that makes sense to you now. So one of the best ways that you can actually ground and begin to run that energy is to physically move. And that won't make you more dense. I think that there's some kind of belief system in the spiritual world that it will actually make you denser and lower vibration, but it's actually not true. And so it's very important to keep that going. So whatever that is, and I mean, there's energy, so that's okay. That's why yoga was invented, the physical yoga. That's only one part of yoga, right? That's why the physical yoga was invented so that it could actually, we could open our bodies so that we could be quiet for meditation, that we could run the energy properly. That's a prime example of what I'm talking about. So however that looks for you, that could actually look like weightlifting to get to bring the energy to a certain parts of the body. That can look like yoga. That can look like tai chi. That can look like dance it can look like anything that you want but actually having a physical practice is very very important so that you can then run the energy and begin to bring awareness to all of these centers so that's a really good way 
obviously being outside, being with the earth, it reminds us, it teaches us so that the energy can actually flow. Because when we're on, you know, all the different surfaces that we're on in cities and concrete, like it doesn't allow the currents of energy to flow. And so then we forget that we're even connected to it. We forget that it feeds us, that it fuels us. Like right now, like I can feel the energy running up through my legs as we're talking about this. And there's this intimate relationship too where she hears me, you know, and then she fuels me and then I send it back down to her. And it's an amazing, amazing connection. So going back to the hermetic teaching, as above, so below, you are spirit in physical form. And I know sometimes that can feel constraining, but it's actually not if we understand how to use it properly. That's what I'm getting to, right? Now, if you do have that energy where um, you can't feel these certain parts of your body, it might not just be a coordination thing. It might be actually physical blocks. And that's where, you know, say trauma things come in or parts of our body that we've disassociated from. And I was just actually having a session with a woman. I don't do sessions anymore publicly because it, I just am too busy right now. And so I'm focusing on the Soul Light Collective. But, so I wanted to say that real quick, but it was coming actually from her ancestry that there was a complete disassociation in the lower half of her body from say that womb area all the way down through her legs. And so it could be an ancestral block. It could be something from, from childhood, right? It could just be like the constraints of, of life and culture uh, right now on earth, which uh, tends to bring our energy into anxiety, which then tightens the chest, constricts and brings our energy just into our head. And so just realizing this and looking at where maybe you need to do some healing, maybe you need to do some trauma release, maybe you need to do some of that shadow work and get down into that lower area where they can be dense and stuck, different, you know, distortions and pleasures that need to be moved through so that the energy can properly flow. And the lower chakras have such amazing potency and empowerment. And it's like, it's like the driving energetic force to do so much other energetic stuff that we need to do. So it's very important to go into those lower centers. And, um, and the more that you do it, the more comfortable you will feel here on earth. Like I, I promise, like I swear, um, the more that I go into my body, the more that I go into these lower chakras, lower centers, the more that I ground and connect with earth, the more vital, the more alive I become. And this is a critical part of ascension. And so it's not just about going out. And I know that there's also the uncomfortability of like being on earth because you're a star seed and you're empathic and stuff. Don't let that be an excuse. You came here so you know that you can do it. You can handle it. It's your gifts. Figure out how to use your superpower. Go watch some of those Marvel movies. See how they do it. You know what I mean? They have to figure out these things for themselves as well. And so um, it's, it's, it's that. You know, think of yourself as a superhuman. And it's such an honor to be in this physical body and to have this vessel. There's so many things that we get to experience that other spiritual beings can't experience. And so, and so pay attention to that. And if for some reason too, there is this, I don't want to be here, I don't want to be here. Think about it this way, that different negative entities can also kind of creep in when you're not home. <laughs> so it's important to be home in your own body so that you're not getting these other influences. So when you're out, you know, that, that other energy or those thought forms or those certain frequencies can start to stream through you, which then can feel really uncomfortable, which then can make you want to go out more. So it's important to check check in on that as well. So this has been kind of a long rant. <laughs> um, so I'm going to close up here in a second, but we're, we're just going to take little walk around because this is so cool. I'll show you some of the views. We, we've been uh, skipping around on these rocks, um, which has been so fun. And it's really fulfilled my inner child. <laughs> um, and let me, let me take you over here because this is really cool. Um, and so yeah. Um, comment below to let me know what you, what you think of this. It might be, it might be that you already know it. It might be new to you. I would love to hear your feedback, what helps you ground. There's so many other ways. I have a whole video on grounding that goes very deep into the, to the energetic stuff. So please go watch that. 
it's really, really interesting. My soul embodiment meditation is down below, which was actually originally created as a grounding meditation. So I suggest going and checking that out as well. And I just really love you guys. And I appreciate you so much. And um, let's like, let's be in our bodies and be excited to be on earth together and then clean up any issues we have so that all of the energy can flow so that we're like on track for ascension and spiritual development. So I'm going to do one little pan here and I'm going to close out. Look, look at this. So cool. Yes. Yes. In these kind of places that it, when, when we're open, when our vessels are open, it can just receive so much energy. It's really fun. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop talking now. But I love you guys very much and wishing you a wonderful day. If you like videos like this, be sure to like. Be sure to subscribe. Be sure to hit that sub the bell button so you get notifications every time I do new, vi do new videos. Check me out on Instagram. And I will see you soon with another video.